Hey friends! So today's video, we're gonna do something kind of like products I regret buying, but more like products I definitely wouldn't buy again and that aren't worth my money. So it's kind of gonna be like things that aren't worth it and things that, I mean, I guess it is products I regret buying, but it's not necessarily products that I wanna get rid of. Does that make sense? Stuff that I don't dislike enough to throw away, but if I could, I wouldn't buy them again. <laughs> Does that make sense? Hope so. Okay, let's go. We're gonna start with two eyeshadow palettes, one of which may be controversial, probably will be because it was a palette that I coveted and then I ended up buying and I realize now I really didn't need it all that much and it's not worth it for me. That is the dark mattes from Viseart. Now, I know, I, I, can, I can hear the gasps. I can hear the gasps right now. This palette was definitely made for like professionals in a way that when you have multiple palettes out, having them be like clear makes the most sense for you for organization purposes. And they always have like a separate mirror anyway. And you don't need mirrors when you're doing other people's makeup, you know, like you're looking at their face. You don't need a mirror. So what this was made for makes sense. For me, no. <laughs> I feel like I never use just this palette. I feel like I only use it in conjunction with other palettes. And honestly, like the shades that are like, remotely unique in here. Like these blues do not blend very easily for how expensive this palette is. This thing, when it's not on sale is $80. So for somebody who's doing professional makeup on other people, getting paid to do it. Yeah, this makes sense. For this bitch, absolutely not. I mean like the reds and the browns blend nicely, but like any palette has had these reds and browns across the bottom. Like the greens are fine. They blend a little bit patchy, but like seriously, these blues, not great. The purples are fine, but yeah, this $80 palette. I mean, I can get a complete look if I'm just using the browns, but it's like, I didn't need this to do that with and I don't know. I just like having a mirror. If I'm gonna spend $80 on something, it's not because I need something for professional use. If I'm gonna spend $80 on something, which I, besides this, I, I got this on sale, by the way. I did not pay full price for this, uh, which is one of the main reasons why I wouldn't do it again because I have told myself since then, if I wouldn't buy it at full price, don't buy it on sale. I'm sorry, but it's the art. I'm sorry. Would I buy this again? No. Another palette, which is one that I feel like I got really hyped up for online because of like a ton of other indie brands that were happening and like blowing up at the time. And this was a brand that I didn't know much about and I've heard things about the owner. They've done some things that I'm not too pleased with. Um, but this is the Block Party palette from Suva Beauty. I own two of the Suva like liners. I own the black one and then like a hot pink one that I think I've worn in like one video. I haven't experimented that much with it. Those I guess are things that I wish I, I didn't need, things that I didn't need to buy, things that I shouldn't have bought from the beginning. But this palette is so similar to the, um, the Juvia's Place Zulu palette that like as far as the shades that are in here, oh my God, like the shades that I use regularly that, or that I would use regularly are ones that I can get better in the Juvia's Place palette. And also this green is not good. <laughs> this is not a good green. It doesn't blend very well. This is smaller than the Juvia's Place palette and it has a mirror. So like, if you prefer the layout of this one better and if you prefer the size of it, like the shadows aren't like bad, but the Juvia's Place ones are honestly better. And it's a really similar color story to this that I shouldn't have bought this to begin with because I literally bought this and probably within a month of buying this. I had used it maybe once. I went to Ulta and I saw that they had the Juvia's Place stand and I was like, oh, I want that palette. And so I bought the Zulu palette, got it home. And I was like, these are the same color story. But this one has like a couple extra shades. Now looking at it, this color story just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, how much my makeup taste can change within a year? I don't, I don't know. Like, honestly, I just prefer the Juvia's Place formula to this one. Is the Juvia's Place formula perfect? No, but it's better than this. <laughs> don't need it. 
One thing that I bought a few years ago before I had decided to stop buying for Mac is a palette that I feel like I've included in favorites videos before. And at the time I enjoyed this and I like the nostalgia of it. Like it looks like a CD. It, it like reminds me of childhood, but from a functional standpoint, most of what I'm using right now and most of the things that I like to use are like more functional than like aesthetic. And this pal, this trio, it's a trio. Okay. This is a, it's a highlight bronze and blush. Um, and then the mirrors here. So basically for me to use this, this needs to sit on a surface. And then this is what I hold. The shades are fine. They're nothing revolutionary. They're not terrible, but they're not special. I bought this because I was obsessed with the packaging and I thought, oh, I can use all three of those shades. That's a bronzer that works for me. It's a blush that works for me. It's a highlight that works for me. I'll use it all the time. Have I used this that much? No. And it's the most annoying thing to get open. Granted, I have press on nails on right now, so it's not helping, but like, that's annoying. Okay. <laughs> like, it's just, I hate opening it. The only display pieces I want are not makeup. <laughs> you know, would I buy this again? No. Another Mac product. I have two more Mac products, actually. This one is kind of generally super pigmented high-end lip glosses. I used to own more lip glosses. I feel like I bought a MAC lip gloss like one time and then I lost it. This was from the MAC Patrick Star collection and I never wear this. I never wear this. Honestly, I shouldn't have bought that whole collection at all, particularly the lip products, but I guess they came in kits. So, you know, my mistake. I, I, these hyper pigmented lip glosses, I literally never use. The only lip glosses that I use are the, honestly, are the ColourPop So Juicy. I have my Glossier gloss. And then I think that's it, honestly. Like those are the only glosses I use. They're not super pigmented. They're really creamy. This is just like bright ass pink. This is what I would have bought like six years ago when I thought I was like so edgy and I wore like hot pink lipstick. I don't wear this color anymore, at least on my mouth. I don't wear this color on my lips. I wear it on my eyes and in my hair, this side. Nope. And then a Mac brush. This, this is, uh, I think the, I think I owned the Mac 217 at one point, possibly. This is the Mac 109 and this brush sucks. Um, this was a brush that was heavily coveted and heavily touted in the early days of my YouTube makeup journey. It was when like Michelle Phan was the biggest makeup person in the sphere. I watched a ton of people that use this brush either for highlighting, for bronzing, for foundation. I bought this brush because of early YouTube. How anybody could use this brush for foundation is beyond me. This brush is, pr this is probably the most expensive brush I own. I own an IT Cosmetics brush, face brush, that's probably similar in price to this. It's all synthetic though. This brush sheds more than any brush I have ever owned. And it is possibly the most expensive one that I have. And it's trash. <laughs> I hate this brush, but Part of me is like, this was expensive. I shouldn't get rid of it. Why do I still have this? Um, because I don't want to give this to anybody because it's not good, but I feel like I should just have it because I spent money on it. It's dumb that I bought this. I shouldn't have bought it. It was a bad idea. It was bad. It sheds so much and it's so densely packed. Like this brush doesn't make sense to me because it's not the right shape for contour because I like something that's more like pinched and then it's too small and far too dense for blush. And I feel like the only thing it works for is highlight. And even then, like it's so densely packed to where if I put on highlight with any sort of like blindingness, this just packs it on so much that it doesn't make sense. Like I don't, I honestly don't know what this blush is brush. I honestly don't know what this brush is for and I shouldn't have bought it because I'm an idiot. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy, dumb, dumb person for buying this. The next thing is one of 
maybe like two or three. One of the only NARS purchases I made when I was still buying from NARS that I truly am like, why? This is the NARS Copacabana Cream Highlight. Again, this I think is a product that I have tricked myself into thinking that I liked and I've included it in favorites videos. You're a liar. Um, <laughs> this thing, I have a lot of it left. I want to try and use this up, but it's such an odd texture. Like, who am I kidding? I never use cream highlights. I have another cream highlight that I'm going to talk about. Something about cream highlights that's in a formula like this, it just doesn't apply nicely on my skin. And this was so expensive. <laughs> this was so expensive. They call it the multiple. What else are you gonna use this color for? Eyeshadow? I don't know. I don't know. Cause like the multiples usually, at least I've seen the other ones where they could be used as like blushes or highlight type things. This is just straight up like a silvery champagne color that I don't dislike it enough to get rid of it but I shouldn't have bought it in the first place. Another cream highlight that I didn't technically buy, but I'm going to talk about how not worth it it is. This was something, this is the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops. This is the shade Celestial. How many things does Abby own named Celestial? Count them, at least two. And this thing I got as a free gift, actually, last year when Cover Effects was doing, I think it was the Black Friday sale. They had like a thing where if you spent at least a certain amount of money, you would get this as like a free thing added on. Um, so I bought two of the fucking sprays. I bought two of my setting sprays and I reached the threshold to get this for free. I'm glad I got it for free because I wasn't gonna spend $44 on highlighter drops. I'm sorry, this was made as like an Instagram gimmick because everybody was dripping shit on their face. Droppers, not that effective for makeup. Um, I'll do droppers in skincare, sure. Droppers with makeup, why? And this is $44. It is so blinding that if you used, if I used cream products the way that some other people use cream products, this would make sense for me, but I don't use cream products, which I know seems counterintuitive because I have dry skin. I just don't like how cream products last on my face and it's just not as easy to do in a hurry for me. This is not worth it. It's $44 dollars for highlighting liquid. No, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking use them because I got them for free. They weren't free. They were a, a gimmick to sell more stuff. I like cover effects though. So it's like, they're not bad. That's the thing is that some of these things that I've talked about are like bad quality for the price. This is good quality, but it's a highlighter drop for $44. I will never run out of this. They shouldn't be selling them this big. <laughs> We got a milk product and a Glossier product. What? This is the Wowder. I used this a lot. Um, I didn't finish it. And why I'm talking about this particular powder is that this, when I was using it, I had really only just ventured into powders. And so I didn't know a lot about powders. I didn't know a lot about, I mean like setting powders. So I didn't necessarily know like what the other ones, like how good other ones were and how much better of a shade match I could get. I love the packaging of this. I will say I love the packaging of it. I like the little like netting in there. I just, I prefer it honestly to the Laura Mercier packaging because there's way too much powder that comes out of that shit, but there's a lot more powder in it. <laughs> so, but the, the color match on this, this was way too dark for an under eye powder for me. Um, like even you can see it in there. It's just like too dark of a powder for under my eyes. And I don't know if they've come out with new colors since then. I sure hope so. And this just wasn't the right thing for me. And I wish I hadn't bought it because I mean, on one hand, I'm like, if I, it like introduced me to the world of setting powders, but the Laura Mercier one is so much better. <laughs> Honestly, it's so much better. It's less drying too. This one's a bit more drying. Um, This is something that I thought I was gonna be so fucking trendy. From Milk. It's one of their eye gloss, eye, eye vinyl, whatever. It's a fucking gloss, goopy ass shit for your eyes. As cool and editorial as glossy eye looks, look. Um, I never wear this practically. 
I've probably worn this, I can count on less than like less than two hands, like one between one and two hands of how many times I've actually used this product. I just don't find it practical for me. And honestly, if you have lids, any sort of creasing on your lids, like any sort of hoodedness of your eyes, this is pointless unless you're doing something for like an editorial look. But like, if you're planning on wearing your makeup for like an extended period of time during the day, this is the most annoying thing because <laughs> it's sticky and your eyes just like stick together. You know how when you're tired and you feel like your eyes are sticking together? This literally makes your eyes stick together. And I don't like it and I shouldn't have bought it for me. It's not, it's not for me, not for me. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is from somebody that y'all know I already have thoughts about, but this isn't about the person, this is about the product. This is the Kat Von D brow pomade. When I bought this, I liked it. When I bought this, I didn't know everything about Kat Von D that I know now. This was right before that happened too. So like right bef right afterwards, I was just mad. I was annoyed with her and I was like, now I have this fucking product. <laughs> It's incredibly pigmented. So for brow products, this is a bit too pigmented for me on a regular basis. I wore this quite a bit. You guys can go back and look and see when I first dyed my hair bright pink, this is what I wore in my brows. And it worked for a little bit, but the way that I do my hair and the way that I keep up my hair color, I do not keep that vibrancy that long to the point where like me wearing this product now, I would look crazy. And I just, I would go for periods where like I could use this when I first got it done. And then when it started to fade, I couldn't use it. And then when I like added more color, I could use it for like two washes. And then my hair changed so much to where this didn't make sense for me to use on a regular basis. And now, I mean, I could use it as an eyeliner. I probably should, but now it just kind of, it sits in a bowl. Like I don't want to get rid of it because it's like, it's the same reason why I don't get rid of the pastel goth palette because I still use it and I still enjoy it. And I already spent my money on it. So there's no sense in getting rid of it if I still want to use it. So, which is why I still have all these NARS and MAC products. Like I bought them years ago and I want to keep using them. Um, it's like, I already spent the money, the harm's done, whatever. I'm not going to return them to the store, but these are things that I wouldn't buy again. I wouldn't buy any MAC things or NARS things again, but particularly these are like principled products that are like, it's about the product specifically, not necessarily about the brand. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, those are a handful of things that I wouldn't buy again. Things that looking back, do I regret buying them? Not necessarily, but if I had hindsight, I wouldn't do it again. You know what I mean? If you like any of these products, I'm so happy that you do because I don't and I'm glad that somebody does. So don't take this personally. If you like this shit, fucking keep on using it. If you do more like smoky looks, like this is, this isn't a bad product. It's just way too expensive for my shopping habits. Um, so yeah, uh, for today's song of the day, I've been really, really into Spirit Awards music lately. I've been working on their episode of the television show that I work on and I really like them. Like they're very good. Today's song of the day is Las Vegas. It is off one of their older records. It's not off the newest one, but I like those guys. They're super cool. They're super chill. They're really nice. Their music's good. They're fun to photograph. We got cool light shows sometimes and lots of wall of sound stuff. And their music videos are dope actually. The music video for Supreme Truth and for Summer. I'll put a link to some music videos below for you guys to check out. Hopefully I can like work on some music videos soon because I'm itching to make shit. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have some content coming up that I've been planning for. I've probably the next video I'm going to film is my updated record collection because I got a new record in the mail the other day and I'm so excited about it. If you guys like my music content, get ready for that because it's going to be really fucking long because <laughs> I have a lot of records now. One other thing, since we are uh, fully into November now, I am going to attempt... I'm not going to promise anything. I'm not going to say that I'm going to succeed with this, but I am going to attempt to do Vlogmas. Um, 
for a number of reasons. One, I just got a bunch of ideas and I'm doing collabs with some of my friends and I was like, I wanna fucking do Vlogmas too, damn it. Um, and two, it's one of the highest CPM seasons, so money. So if there are any particular videos that you guys think would be a fun time for Vlogmas, let me know in the comments below. Um, let, or tweet me, send me stuff on Instagram. I just want ideas. I have like a good t 12 or so right now that I'm planning out and stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna attempt to do that. I've got some new makeup coming in the mail too. So I'll try and do like a, I don't know, a little roundup of, of new things and indie makeup stuff. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Please go check out uh, Spirit Awards music. I will leave links to their shit in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. If you are a new person, if you haven't subscribed, if you like my content, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe, that would be awesome. Um, I want to see maybe if I can get to like 40,000 by the end of the year. That would be really fucking cool. So, ooh. okay. See y'all in my next video. Bye.